we're live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. So this is God is in the ark? Yes, God is in the ark. Today's November today, 11? November 11. 2023? 2023. Praise be to God. Now you, the year is coming to an end. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The year is coming to an end. Yeah, we've got a lot to reflect on what God has done. Yeah, in year 2023. Yeah. Thank you so much. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just confirm that we're, we're live and that we have some. Okay, and we do have sound, so we're... <laughs> It'll be a while before we forget, like we did that couple of weeks back when we forgot to set the microphone up and then forgot to turn it on. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Sure, it happens. Praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> so, hallelujah. Welcome to God is in the Ark. And we're, we're going to try something a little different today. Amen. We're going to spend some time more in Scripture and mm -hmm. less, a little less teaching. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that, where that takes us. Yeah. What? That's so good. That's so good. Yeah. Uh, you are saying it will be a kind of like an expository kind of teaching. Well, we're going to, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little more. A little more. A little okay. more than usual. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Wow. So, how are you doing with, no, with uh, our today, Manitoba weather? No, Manitoba weather today is. Uh, I will have a good weather today mm -hmm. in Manitoba. It is a sunny day. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have, it is not snoring. Well, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good weather today. Yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling that cold. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good so, weather. See, this, this weather is more like where I'm coming from. Uh, when we say it is cold, it's a, of this kind. Yeah, mm. it is of this kind, yeah. So it's not a problem, but it comes when, when you know, the previous days it was snoring. You know, you cannot even put on uh, sneakers. We call it sneakers. They are yeah. small shoes. Yeah. I mean, you freeze out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You freeze out. And, you know, you could, I could feel my hands itching. But as if I've made an accident, but it's, it's just a, a coldness, so to say. Mm -hmm. No, you know, it's, it's tough. Well, yeah. Well, it turns out that when you get older, mm -hmm. your circulation is not so good. Mm -hmm. I gotta wear some very good gloves or mitts. Wow. When it really gets cold, I mm -hmm. uh, wear cotton gloves inside mm -hmm. of uh, lined mm -hmm. leather mitts. My goodness! Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's where we live. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're blessed. Yes. Tornadoes are very rare. Hurricanes mm -hmm. never affect us. We just don't have those. Wow. Um, because we're so far inland, mm -hmm. by the time they get here, they're petered out. Mm -hmm. If they get here at all, we get a little rain or something. But not know. that uh, as devastating as it is in no. some other presses. No. And, okay. And when we do, when we have had a, mm -hmm. a tornado or whatever, of course, tornadoes, mm -hmm. they're they're fierce, but they're confined to a rather small area. So, oh, we thank God. We, we welcome our uh, viewers out there, wherever we are. This is the 11th October, uh, September of 2023. I mean, November. November. Yeah. 11th November 2023. Uh, uh, welcome to this program we call. God is, is in the ark. God is in the ark. God is in the house. Today, Pastor Love says, has brought us uh, not a kind of teaching, but a kind of like exposing the scriptures in the Bible. So uh, let's just be very attentive and hear what he, uh, he has brought. Uh, it's our prayer that he, 
God is going to touch your life. God is going to open your eyes. God is going to do something mm. new in your life. Now, each time we expose the word of God, each time we bring the word of God, the word of God is not void. The word of God is not infective. The word of God is effective. Amen. It does some, something in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. So expect God to do something in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, what is it that you have brought, Pastor Love? Well, we're going to start in Romans chapter 10, and verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Okay. okay. And because it starts with a prayer, we're going to start with praying for Israel. So when you... Yeah, Romans chapter 10. There we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That's a great place to start, especially at this particular season. Things are, Father, we thank you for your promises and your saints who've prayed over the years. Paul's prayer here for Israel that all of Israel might be saved. So, Father, we thank you right, that Lord. you will protect your children. Amen. Father, that you will deal with their enemies, even with grace and mercy. And, Father, we thank you that uh, even in the midst of turmoil, Father, some hearts are turning towards you and towards your Messiah, Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your promises mm -hmm. to all of Israel. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for those individuals mm -hmm. who will turn their hearts mm -hmm. towards you through your son Jesus, their mm -hmm. Messiah. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Father, bring this turmoil and mess mm -hmm. to a quick end, Father. Uh, but no sooner than when you're finished mm -hmm. with keeping your <laughs> reducing your energy to the place where he's no longer a bother yes uh, we we hope we trust that amongst many of those palestinian peoples mm -hmm. we know many of them are not mm -hmm. uh, are not hamas they are not nasty people they're just people who are trapped mm -hmm. in an uncomfortable place mm -hmm. and father we ask that you would touch their hearts mm -hmm and bring many of them mm -hmm. to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we know that even in the midst of that nasty place, there are Christians. Yes, Lord. There are Christians. And Father, we yes. thank you for the, your blessing and your protection of them. And Father, for your being able to witness through them to others that they might be saved. They might come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, Paul says, verse 2, mm. he says, I bear them record mm -hmm. that they have a zeal of God. There's a desire. Mm -hmm. There's a desire, mm -hmm. but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. He said that they're being ignorant of God's righteousness. They don't recognize, they don't know or understand mm -hmm how to achieve righteousness with the Father. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're go and, and verse 3, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish yeah. their own righteousness, mm -hmm. they've not submitted them unto the righteousness of God. They haven't submitted themselves to his righteousness, to his plan for righteousness. They're trying to do it on their own. And we touched that a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about uh, people trying to save themselves, you know, by their own good works. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is definitely doesn't work. Because <laughs> we've seen, you know, all kinds of uh, various groups. We won't call them churches, but we'll, you know, religious groups at best mm -hmm. who 
propose that they have an idea or a, a way or a, a method mm. to bring you into a right standing with God. Mm. But we know that they, all of them fall apart sooner mm. or later mm. because they're, they depend on the skill and ability of people mm. to organize themselves in mm. certain ways and mm. it never works. Okay. Now, so, uh, okay. Continue, yep. continue. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what I wanted to say here, according to the, the verses that you have laid up to, uh, is it up to verse what? We're, 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 we made it to the end of verse 3. To verse 3. Now, what is clear here is that Paul is acknowledging the zeal of God. Mm -hmm. that these people that have got that zeal. You know, yeah. Um, uh, in this case, they have that desire to do or what God wants them to do. But now, there's one thing that he, again he acknowledges here is that they are ignorant of how to obtain the lusciousness of God. Amen. They are ignorant. They have that zeal to reach God, so to say. We can put it in that way. Yeah. They have got that zeal to reach God. But the way of reaching God is, is like now a mystery to them. Mm. It's not revealed to them. Amen. Now, Paul here was saying, uh, we need to pray for these people because God has got his own way of lusciousness. Yes. But now these people have gone on establishing their own. That now when we do this, that means we are praising God. Yeah. This is our way of lusciousness. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to make clear on that one actually. Yes. We need to understand that these people they had that desire yeah. to serve God or to fear God or to worship God. But now God has got only one way. Yeah. 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 Of doing that thing. And now this one way is hidden to these people. And according to you say to these people, you say, Hello, my dear brothers, that to Israel, yeah. we should say, to Israel, this way is hidden to them. Yeah. Now, because it is hidden, so they, it's like now they have they sat down somewhere and made recommendations or conclusions to say, uh, this, the, I think this is the way now to lusciousness. Mm -hmm. If somebody do this ABCD, they wrote down all the things. If somebody is able to do this, then he is righteous before God. Mm. And now Paul is saying, but this is not the way God has given them. Now they are failing to submit. Yeah. He, that's the, the, the way he has done it. Is, I mean, used. this is the NIV. I mean, King James Version. King James, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe you read from uh, verse 3 as you were explaining there. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness mm -hmm. and going about to establish their own righteousness mm -hmm. have not submitted themselves mm -hmm. unto the righteousness yeah. of God. Now, yes, now the Bible says have gone their own way. Yeah. Now when you say they, they have gone, that means they did something. Oh, that's it's your, uh, okay. They, that's where I'm hearing yeah, voices. I yeah, thought it was they, my phone. They did something. They established their own, failing to submit yeah. to the lusciousness of God. So this is just I just wanted to make clear so that um, we, we our viewers there must understand as you are uh, exposing these scriptures. Uh, um, they have the zeal Paul is acknowledging. They, they have that zeal. And maybe when it was in Africa, I would say when it comes to Sunday, you find that everybody has crossed his house, has gone to church. Mm -hmm. You know, has gone to church, has that zeal. And maybe that one, maybe uh, where we're coming from in Africa, we have got uniforms. You know, mm -hmm. you find that they have bought those uniforms that in uniforms. Mm -hmm. You know, no, it's, 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 they have that zeal of saying, well, let's do something, let's please God. But now, not according to the standard that God has put in place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. and you see that mm -hmm. in all kinds of, even so-called churches. Mm -hmm. You know, if you 
keep our set of rules mm -hmm. and you attend to our church mm -hmm. and you get baptized according to our rule, mm -hmm. you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. uh, not true. <laughs> it's not keeping the rules mm -hmm. that gets you saved. Mm -hmm. So in verse 4 mm -hmm. in Romans 10, it says, For Christ, mm -hmm. the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Messiah, is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Christ is the end of the law. So keeping the law for righteousness. In the Old Covenant, in the uh, temple, mm -hmm. in, the, in Moses' tabernacle, mm -hmm. there were rules to be kept. Mm -hmm. There were sacrifices to be made every year. And when you did that, you, ha you could only hope that God accepted your sacrifice mm. and that you would be considered righteous for the remainder of the year. Mm -hmm. But uh, you weren't sure. You had no assurance. Mm -hmm. No assurance. And so they were always... Uh, well, in one, one place the Bible says that it was a... Uh, you were in bondage to the devil because of the fear of death. Mm -hmm. The devil could lead you astray mm -hmm. using fear of death. I like that scripture. Mm. That scripture is Hebrews chapter 2. Okay, good. Yeah. That scripture yeah. is Hebrews chapter 2. You can read there. Let's read that one. Okay. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2. Since you said we'll be exposing scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. That's Hebrews. Hebrews 2. Mm. It's to be... Uh, Yeah, it's, it's chapter 2, it should be from verse, um, verse 14. From verse 14. Amen. Mm -hmm. That he might destroy. Yeah, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, mm -hmm. he also himself likewise mm -hmm. took part of the same. Mm -hmm. This is speaking of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That through death mm -hmm. he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Mm -hmm. to deliver them mm -hmm. who through the fear of death mm -hmm. were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's the, yeah, that's what the scripture was saying. They were, because the fear is like he, the fear of death gripped them. Mm -hmm. So they were in bondage, or we we'll say not they were, but we were yeah. in bondage. Uh, the fear of death then mm -hmm. Jesus came to set us free from that fear of death. This is very interesting, Pastor Love. Uh, in this case, uh, it, it says we should not fear death. Amen. Amen. We should not fear death. No. No reason to fear it. As believers, because the Bible says he destroyed we who had the power of death. Amen. He destroyed him. And that he's got the keys. The keys. Yeah. Of the, death and of, hell. Of death and hell. So therefore, if, if, if death on us is like a season. Yeah. It's like a season. Now it's like, a, or I would say transition. So, so to say. Maybe. Yeah. A season is, is something like, uh, it's like as, as we were discussing about the weather here. It's like a season that, that someday it can be colder than some days can be colder than other days yeah. so when it is colder than other days it does not mean that's the end of your life yeah right so when i disappear here on earth does not mean that my life has come to an end no it's that i've gone into another chapter of life huh. that i'm unable uh to converse so to say huh. with my friends those have left them in this other side of of life hmm. i feel I, I think it is so yeah that's very clearly so in the <laughs> scriptures. <laughs> yeah. As uh, uh, we'll quote uh, Billy Graham had an interesting thing to say, mm -hmm. knowing that he was terminal. Mm -hmm. um, he said, you know, there's no fear of dying. Mm -hmm. He said, all that's going to happen is I'm going to change postal codes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll still be alive. Mm -hmm. I just have a different address. Mm -hmm. 
you know, <laughs> that's all the changes. Yeah, I just moved from mm -hmm. this world to mm -hmm. the next one. Mm -hmm. I've changed postal codes and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> Praise be to God. Yeah. Okay. And we have these uh, letter and, and number postal codes. Mm -hmm. So if you, I've made up a postal code for heaven. If you take H and it's place of an E, you put a 3, H3A, V3N, heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so God. my new postal code, H. Praise God. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Okay. And now, before we go further, there's this scripture, the verse that you have just opened in Romans chapter 5. It should be verse 4. Yeah. And you're saying Christ, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Anointed One, is the. the in King James Version, it says. It says the end of the law for mm -hmm. righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Your, your righteousness no longer is to be found in the law. There's no way. The, the law, all it ever did was expose the fact that you were a sinner. <laughs> it just brought out, exposed the fact that you couldn't keep the law mm -hmm. and that you had to trust on the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. You had to have faith. Mm -hmm. The old covenant system mm -hmm. only worked As you when you had mm -hmm. faith mm -hmm. that God was a merciful God mm -hmm. and he would show mercy towards you. Mm -hmm. His children. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the law only ever exposed sin, mm -hmm. so that people would have to be trusting on the grace of God, and so that's Jesus is the end of that to everyone that believes. Believes what? Well, believes in Him. Now our righteousness. Second uh, Corinthians five, verse twenty one. For God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. So when you believe that Jesus took upon himself our sinfulness and, it, and imparted to us his righteousness. So now our righteousness has nothing to do with me. Our righteousness now is a gift that he's bought and paid for and gives it to us. And our part is simply to believe, have faith mm -hmm. that that is so. It's true that we are now the righteousness. We have right standing with God through what Jesus has done for us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I was searching a scripture um, which says the law was a supervisor. It was pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm. And uh, it says, if a new thing is coming, that means the old thing is what? Yeah. That's going away. Yeah. So I wanted uh, us to debate much on this, uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, verse 4, that was verse 4, mm. that Christ is the end of the law. The law. Yeah. So when Christ appears, that the Bible says when Christ appears, that was the end of the law. Yeah. Now we were no longer to look ourselves through the law. Yeah, amen. We were no longer to to justify ourselves ourselves through the law. And in this uh, scripture, it says the law was a supervisor. So you can see at uh, the position of supervisor is acting. In a position of the boss. Mm -hmm. When the boss is not there, you all fix your eyes on the supervisor. What did the supervisor say? So the law was doing a supervisory law while we were waiting mm. for the coming of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, the moment Jesus appeared, that is according to verse 4, yeah. that was the end of the law. Amen. Why was it the end of the law? Because the law was fulfilling, I mean, Jesus came to fulfill the law amen so that we were it's just like you put my you put me in this house before you open a door a door like that one and say christopher wait for the door the door is coming now before the door is not yet there you'll be using this window to come in and to go out amen and now you have come and you have 
Oh man, say Christopher, yes, now that door. That means there's no no reason of me going back to the window, saying I'll be using this window to come in and out of this house. And you say, no, Christopher, I've opened you this door. Yeah. So I see it in that way to say, Christ, as he puts this, he said, I'm the way. So Christ is the, the Bible says he is the the, he came to fulfill the law. That's why Paul says he is the, the way to righteousness. He says is Christ. Amen. The, that law is, is just like he, um, I would put it maybe like a container. Jesus is like a container. All the laws that God said to the Jews are now put in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because he is the complete of law. Amen. So that's why Paul was saying uh, they have not put, I mean, they have not submitted, as I was saying there. It says God has opened the door. I simply have to submit to say this is the door that goes as what I have to forget about the law. And you have to humble yourself because you used to be able to have pride mm -hmm. in your ability to come and go through the window. Mm -hmm. But you know, I could oh, I am you, so look at me! I'm so smart. I, I can come and go through the window. And you see, you know, it it requires some energy. Yeah, for me to go through the window yeah. to come in, and it requires some energy. Now, in this case, my salvation does not require any energy. Amen. It requires what submissiveness to simply to submit. They say, as Paul says, they have not submitted to. Uh, the lusciousness of God. Amen. It does not need my effort. Because for me to go through the window, I have to apply the effort. I have to jump in. Or maybe somebody... Or you have to climb up to on climb something. Up something. You know, somebody has to provide the boxes the, for you to climb on. Yes, it's an effort. An effort. That is an effort. And, you know, if you don't... You know, they'll tell you, well, now, if you don't use our boxes, you can't climb to the window. Mm -hmm. So you have to come and get boxes says, from us. It will be easy Our for you. cult, our group. Yes, yes. Our church, Amen. you have to keep Amen. our rules Amen. to come so, and go. So in this case, Pastor Ralph, you are establishing to say, what Paul is saying that the, uh, they have got zeal for God. They have got that hunger for God. But they have gone a long way establishing their own lusciousness. Yeah. Now here you are saying the lusciousness of God that God wants, every, that God wants the Jews to submit to. Is Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. This is what you are trying to uh, yeah. say. The only uh, 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 righteousness that God has given us. Because, now, one would say, why is it that God is, I mean, Jesus is our righteousness, Pastor? Why is it that Jesus is our righteousness? Well, for starters, mm -hmm. we couldn't keep the law. We couldn't, number and one, you say, we couldn't keep We them. couldn't keep it. Mm -hmm. because the law requires absolute perfection all the time. And the Bible says when you break one, you have broken. You've broken the whole thing. If you break one, you've broken the law. You have and, to start and the over. Punishment, the punishment is eternal separation from God in death. Okay. But mm -hmm. <laughs> the good news, mm -hmm. the good news, mm -hmm. he says... Uh, I got a better plan. Mm -hmm. If you will submit yourself in faith and believing uh, that my son has done it for you, you can experience right standing with me, righteousness with me, just by believing. And that's, uh, you know, the end of verse four. You know, to uh, everyone that <laughs> believes, mm -hmm. it's the end of keeping the law. That is verse 5. Let's read that verse 5. Yeah. For Moses. You, you, okay. Mm -hmm. That's well, verse 5. Eh? That was verse 4. We're going, we can go on now. Okay. okay. Now, now, before you, before we, we, we go to verse, the other verse, you know, uh, there's something that is coming in my mind. Um, as you are saying to say, uh, Christ is at the end of the law. If you do not submit to him, there's no any other way yeah. that you can be accepted by Christ, by God, Amen. by Christ Jesus, but by God. Amen. You say, there's no any other way that yes. you can praise God. There's no any other way that you can obtain righteousness mm -hmm. apart from submitting yourself to Christ Jesus. Amen. You know? So I, I feel like 
in the Old Testament, we depended, or man depended on his abilities. Yes. Now, as you are explaining here, it's like God is bringing a gift to say, if you accept this gift and you receive it, mm -hmm. that means you are standing right with me. Yeah. Now, in the other ways, God is saying, I do not require you. I've seen that your effort has failed you. Mm. Yes. Yeah. My effort has failed me. The ability, all the that hard work I try so much, God has seen that no, the law uh, fails to justify somebody Amen. before God. And now God is bringing a gift. Mm-hmm. This is what you are saying, Pastor. Amen. And in one place it's called the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness. Because it does not require anything from you. Yeah. It's all been done for me. It has been done for me. The only thing that is required of me is to submit. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. That's powerful. Yeah. That is awesome. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let's go on to verse 5. Mm -hmm. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, mm -hmm. that the man who does those things shall live by them. Mm -hmm. If you're going to try to live by the law, you've got to keep the whole law. Mm -hmm. That's, and uh, I forget the uh, rabbis established there's something like 600 and some rules or whatever. You've got to keep all of them mm -hmm. because, the, you know, every time they... Well, in one place, Jesus says, you know, you're, you're vipers or you're sons of the devil. You're worse because you, you lead people to your, your way of salvation and they're going to die and you're going to be responsible for that. I'm going to count it to your account that they, are, that they failed. And um, yeah, just you can't live by it. You can't make it can't keep the rules. Mm -hmm. They're just too many. They're just too, too many. many. Just too many. And Jesus, at more than one place, he called them snakes, vipers, <laughs> which is always a picture of Satan, the devil. And a couple of places he actually calls them devils, the, the Pharisees. The, right, the religious people mm -hmm. who are trying to establish their righteousness. Amen. Now, and proud of it. Yeah, proud of it. Now it's like here, before we go, we, let's go back to verse 1. You know, when Paul was saying, I, my prayer to, the, to these people, the Israelites. Now, um, at this point in time, this verse does not only apply to the Jews, to the Israelites alone. Yes. Even to us all. Mm. Yeah. Now that Jesus is here, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It, we're all one before God. We are all unrighteous, mm -hmm. and we all need a Savior. Mm -hmm. And whether you're Jew or Gentile, mm -hmm. Jesus is the way to a uh, right standing with the Father. Amen. 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 Okay. There's, there's no other way. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. So that's what I did. I wanted to establish. Now, um, we say uh, this. Uh, we have got this argument out there. That said this verse was not written to me. It was not written for the Jews. No, it was written for this. But now, when I studied the Bible, I found that there is no specific verse that is being addressed to you. Is it so? That no specific verse that is addressed to you personally, Pastor La. Because when you read in, in Revelation, you say that to the church of the uh, Philadelphia, write this. To the church of um, Macedonia, write this. To the church of... So people have got an argument out there to say uh, this revelation was for the church of Philadelphia. Mm. But now they are failing to apply it to the modern church, mm. to today's church. You know, so I was saying to say, uh, we have that kind of arguments. Other people say, no, this verse is not written uh, for me. It was written for the Jews. They are not yet saved. They have, but when I look at it, if we have people out there 
I would call them Gentiles here because they say Israel, I call them Gentiles, that they do not want to submit to the will of God, I mean to the righteousness of God. But now they have gone flat out, helping the needy. Uh, maybe, yeah, I would put it generally, helping the needy or having that uh, kindness. And they think that by so doing, they are praising God and they'll go to heaven. Yeah. What, can, what can you advise? What, what can you tell? Well, that's the same thing mm -hmm. <clears throat> as what the Jews were trying to do, mm -hmm. to earn righteousness by what they do, mm -hmm. by what they do. Mm -hmm. They think, uh, you know, if I'm good, if I do good things, God will find that acceptable. Because but the problem what? is, mm -hmm. my doing good came out of my own pride. Mm -hmm. I am trying to make myself mm -hmm. good enough. Mm -hmm. And God has made it so clear mm -hmm. in the Bible mm -hmm. that our righteousness, in mm -hmm. one place it says, is, mm -hmm. is as filthy rags. Am I? No. <laughs> Uh, our audience is mostly adults, so we'll mm -hmm. go a little deeper in, in that filthy rags mm -hmm. to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. Now, you understand, as in the Old Covenant, mm -hmm. how much blood of any kind defiled someone. Mm -hmm. They were unrighteous. You know, if you died, they're thinking, mm -hmm. if you died mm -hmm. until the sun went, before the sun went down, you were unrighteous, mm -hmm. and you were going to straight to hell. Mm -hmm. Okay, any kind. So uh, a man, there's no way mm -hmm. he would touch his wife during her monthly cycle mm -hmm. because he'd be unclean and he couldn't appear in church mm -hmm. and he couldn't present offerings in the mm -hmm. temple. Mm -hmm. He was defiled. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the filthy rags we're speaking of mm -hmm. here are menstrual mm -hmm. rags. Yes. So that's in the eyes of the of the father. Of the father mm -hmm. That's how our own right. our own ability mm -hmm. is as filthy our, rags. Our, I would put it our own way of manufacturing righteousness. Yes. appears before God. It, it appears like a filthy rags. Yeah, before God, which is. In the Jewish mind, absolutely Amen. detestable. Amen. You know, the worst possible Amen. thing you could mm -hmm. encounter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, praise be to uh, God. <clears throat> oh, praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, uh, now, we're going to have to read, because these verses are all linked. But the righteousness, this is verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith's faith speaks on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down. Who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what does it say? What saith it? The word, rhema, the spoken word, mm -hmm. the living word. Mm -hmm is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Mm -hmm. And this is the rhema, the word of faith which we preach, mm -hmm. that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you shall confess, this is an act of the will, mm -hmm. in order to speak, Mm -hmm. to say, and it's actually Greek homologia, to say the same things, to say the same things agreeing with God. Mm -hmm. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. an act of your will, mm -hmm. believe in your heart, mm -hmm. and your heart all through the scriptures really is the sum of your soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. okay? If you'll believe in your heart mm -hmm. and choose by your will mm -hmm. to declare Jesus Lord of your life, Submit. Mm -hmm. Submit to his plan and his life and his way of making you righteous. Believe in your heart, God raised the new dead. You shall be saved. So and so. Amen. Saved. Amen. And it's an act of the will mm -hmm. and a uh, witness 
of the Spirit Mm. in your heart, Mm. in your soul, and in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so many people have responded to an emotion. Mm -hmm. They've been in a church service. The gospel was preached hard and whatever, salvation. Mm -hmm. They were stirred up in their emotions, and they went to an altar and prayed a prayer and thought they were saved. But a few days later, nothing changed because they were not Mm -hmm. electing. The Holy Spirit had not Mm -hmm. touched their hearts. Mm -hmm. So they had tried to respond to an emotion Mm -hmm. that stirred up by an orator Mm-hmm. Not necessarily a preacher, but an orator. An orator. Mm-hmm. And um, a good speaker. Yeah, a good speaker, yes. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> unless the Holy Spirit reveals mm-hmm. the Father and Jesus to you, mm-hmm. you don't know Him and you never will. Mm -hmm. You cannot Mm -hmm. create Mm -hmm. a Jesus in your head, Mm -hmm. in your mind, in your own thoughts Mm -hmm. that will save you. Mm -hmm. You have to let Mm -hmm. the Spirit speak to your spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, this is something, um, uh, a caution Mm -hmm. that I feel for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Be very, very careful if you're in a service or in a place Mm -hmm. where you're feeling the the spirit in you is saying otherwise is is, yeah is wanting to speak uh, or wants you to make a confession of your Mm -hmm. faith Mm -hmm. and you keep refusing Mm -hmm. you refuse it Mm -hmm. you refuse it a second and a third time Mm -hmm. Don't depend on there being another chance. You can't. You can only come to the Father when He's calling, when the Holy Spirit is moving on you. Mm -hmm. And when you've hardened your heart, Mm -hmm. like Pharaoh did, he hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. And then it says God hardened his heart. Mm -hmm. God helped him (laughs) almost uh, to... To harden his heart, mm-hmm. and then there was no opportunity of repentance. Mm-hmm. Now, I think it's in Hebrews that mm-hmm. talks about uh, a, a, a reaching a place mm-hmm. where there's no more chance. Mm-hmm. There's no more, yeah, uh, no more mm-hmm. grace. No, no more grace. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just very important mm-hmm. that if the Holy Spirit is moving on you. Respond now. Don't now. wait. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. wait. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're, uh, you're respond now. Yes. Okay. So. No. Mm. Um, on this very uh, verse that you have talked about, this the verse five, six, up to what? Oh well, we. We rushed over, but we got to verse 9. Up to verse 9. Okay. Uh, now, it's, it's, it's like the Bible is speaking. As you are explaining here, the Bible is speaking So well, in this case, he says he's talking about salvation. You see, you don't you don't have uh, to say who will bring God in heaven. I mean, who bring down God in heaven, or who will go down. And he's saying the word of salvation is very near to you. That's what he says. Mm-hmm. He says the word of salvation. And now let's go in detail. Salvation. This word of salvation. What does it? It, it means what? It means, uh, what is salvation is like uh, it's not only he has not only come to save us from the hands of the enemy he has also come to save us from what the enemy has given us yes now he says this word of salvation of snatching us from the hand of the enemy snatching us from what the enemy has given us has inflicted us with 
-hmm. He says, that word of salvation is on your tongue. Amen. So much nearer than one thinks. So simple than one thinks. Say, so that word is what? Is on your tongue. And say, so what do you do with that word? He says, if you confess, hmm? if you, let's read, let's read. Uh, okay. If you... That was his near. He says, he's near. If, if you confess. Well, let's, let's see. Uh, you, where does it? Oh, okay. In verse eight. Mm -hmm. But what does it say? The word is nigh thee. Mm -hmm. Close. Mm -hmm. Even close. in thy mouth mm -hmm. and in thy heart, mm -hmm. and this is the word of faith which we preach. He mm -hmm. says that word of faith that we preach is on your mouth and on your heart, yeah. in your heart. It's so yeah. near. It's in your. It's, uh, uh, in other words, it's, the food is on the table. Yeah. All that you need to do is just to go there on the table and eat the food. Mm -hmm. Then you are saved from hunger. Mm -hmm. Now he says, um, that's verse what. Verse 8? Uh, uh, yeah. It says, okay, in fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. This is a living translation. Yeah. So the message is very close at, the, at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. Mm -hmm. It is already, that means the word is already there. But the only problem of me is to accept that word. And that... You see, when the confess mm -hmm. requires an act of your will. Mm -hmm. of you your have will. to make a deliberate mm -hmm. choice mm -hmm. to believe. Mm -hmm. Now, in, uh, so they say, and this message, and it says, and this message, and that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord mm -hmm. and believe in your heart and say, if you declare, if you confess, why, you said something about this confession. Uh, what you, you, uh, he says, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, two things, yeah. confessing with the mouth and believing with the heart, yeah. two things. So you said confession. What do you, I heard you saying something about confession. Well, the uh, Greek word homologia. Homologia. In to Greek say word. the same words. To say the same word that the Lord is saying. Exactly. Upon your life. Yeah. If you repeat the word of God, when God says you are healed, God says you are blessed, you speak the same language with God. Mm. Openly. Yeah. yeah. This is what the Bible says. Yeah. If you speak the same language, and when you are speaking that same language, and you are believing what you are saying, that's what the Bible says. Yes. Say, I confess the same. In other words, you say, I speak in the same way God speaks. Amen. Or either I address myself in the same way that God addresses me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, assuming you are the professor, and I'm calling you professor, and now you, you go in front of the people and say, uh, I am Professor Love. You are saying, agreeing with what you are, we are together on the same platform. Mm. I am addressing you as professor. You go on the platform, you address also yourself mm. as professor. And he says, you believe again that word of professorship. Mm. I think this is what the Bible says, according to the a meaning of the Hebrew word confession that you have given us you say speaking the same ways that god is speaking yeah in other words addressing yourself in the manner that god addresses you or in other ways speaking the same vocabulary that god is speaking about your life and you're saying about your life what he says about uh, it mm -hmm. What he, he says about it. Uh, what he says about it. Yeah. And the other, uh, the other statement that the Bible says here, it says, and if I believe that same vocabulary, that same way God is addressing me, and he says, finally, I'm what? The Bible says, finally, I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm saved. And this is what the Bible says. It says, um, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. Amen. Now, in this way, it is like taking us back to the very same book, Romans should be chapter 4. Abraham believed God. Yeah. 
And it was what? Counted to him for righteousness. Righteousness. It is believing. He didn't even have the law. Mm -hmm. He didn't have even the law. That was what Paul was, his point he was making there, that Mm -hmm. Abraham was considered righteous by God. By believing, not by works. Not by his works. Not by his works. Because he believed. So he says, the heart, the use of the heart is to believe. So when we believe, we obtain righteousness. What do we believe? We believe in Christ Jesus. Amen. We believe in Christ Jesus. And then when we believe in Christ Jesus, we obtain righteousness. And then it goes on to the confession says, "Mm, and and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Mm -hmm. Two things. Two things that is required. Confession and believing. Two things again that come out of uh, of of believing and the, uh, uh, what and believing and is believing is we obtain righteousness, yeah. confession we obtain salvation. Amen. That's what the Bible says here. So I like the way you are uh, uh, articulating here. You say uh, confession is speaking the same way, yeah. the same ways that God is speaking about your life. Yes. And again, it's a, you have to submit your will. Mm-hmm. No longer my way, but no, his way. No longer my way. You confess and say, Father, no longer my way, yeah. but your way. Yeah. And I'm saved. So mm-hmm. this is the kind of uh, uh, lusciousness that the, the Israelites are unable to understand. Yes. So we would say Israelites, yes, but we have got so many Israelites today Mm-hmm. More so like as the war is going on, so many people are saying, no, these Jews are not the chosen one. Because they, you know, and people, they go to say, are you aware that these Jews are not Christians? Say, then you do not know what you are talking. Mm-hmm. Because my Bible tells me to say, yes, they are not Christians now. Because they are still waiting for the Messiah. Though the Messiah already appeared to them, mm-hmm. but they have failed to recognize. Yeah. That's why today they are not called what? Christians. Christians are those who have accepted Christ. Amen. So them today they have not accepted Christ. So you cannot, I cannot call them Christians. No. Because Christians are those who have accepted what? Christ. But there's only one thing that is evident here. Is that the covenant of God is still with, yes. with them. Yes. God makes covenants and he doesn't break. Mm-hmm. Some of the covenants that he made with men... Mm-hmm. Men broke, mm-hmm. but God still honored them. Mm-hmm. And over and over, mm-hmm. Israel as a nation has mm-hmm. broken the, the covenants covenant. of the Father, mm-hmm. and yet the Father continues to honor them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that Israel exists as mm-hmm. a nation today mm-hmm. is because of his covenant mm-hmm. 2,000 years or 3,000 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. Uh, that he would make them a nation mm-hmm. and that he would... He would look after them. Mm-hmm. And the fact that there was 2,000 years of... Mm-hmm. It's the only nation that's ever... Amen. That's Amen. ever been put into captivity, mm-hmm. separated, mm-hmm. and remained an identifiable group of people. Mm-hmm. No, it's never happened before. Mm-hmm. Because God was watching over, even mm-hmm. in their scattering all over the world... Oh, yes. He was watching over their hearts. Amen. He was keeping them tuned in as as much as he could. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he, there's a a place where he doesn't violate free will, mm-hmm. but he managed to keep the culture together enough. So when they came back to Israel, mm-hmm. they were all mm-hmm. of a common heart, mm-hmm. you know, looking for. Mm-hmm. their Messiah, mm-hmm. looking for the peace of Jerusalem, mm-hmm. looking to inhabit the land mm-hmm. that God had promised them yes. thousands of years Thousand ago. Thousand years ago. Yeah. So this is the one thing that we have it here, that God does not break his covenant. Absolutely. His covenant is still there. Yeah. In their ignorance, that covenant is still there. Yeah. Praise be to God. Let's yeah. continue. Yeah, so... This is still time. This is still time. Okay, we can go a little more. Mm -hmm. Um, Verse 
we were on verse 9. Uh, yeah. Let's go to Romans 9. Romans Back 9. up a little bit. Because we were talking about uh, the uh, righteousness and how to attain it. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 9 verse. Yeah, back up. Let's go to... I'll go to verse 30. Let's see. 30? 30? Yeah. 30. Three zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. Mm -hmm. And they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Mm -hmm. That is faith. That is faith. It's faith. Mm -hmm. Faith in God, faith in mm -hmm. his mercy, mm -hmm. and ultimately faith in his His provision, his Messiah, his provision for making us righteous. Let's, let me read the, the, the new translation. Mm -hmm. It says, what does all this mean? Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, they were made right with God. Amen. And it was by faith that this took place. Amen. But the people of Israel who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping the law never succeeded. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law. Instead of by trusting in him, they stumbled over the great rock in their path. Amen. God warned them of this in the scripture when he said, I am pressing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble, a rock that make them, make them, makes them fall. But anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Yes. And we know that God. Jesus is the rock. Is it that rock? That Israel keeps stumbling over. They keep missing it. I know there's something interesting in this verse. The Bible said the Gentiles that uh, they were not seeking to be right with God. They obtained this righteousness and by faith. But these people who were trying so hard to obtain faith by uh, works, they stumbled. Or it says, the Bible says, why not? Because they were trying to get right with God. Okay, it says verse, but, verse 31, but the people of Israel who tried so hard to get right with God. That means yeah, King James Version, verse 31. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Okay. This I like the, the, the emphasis that is put on this verse 31, but it says, But the people of Israel who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping that said they tried so hard, so hard. Yeah so hard they did not succeed yeah. you know this reminds me of what you are saying say it's a simple thing submit yeah. it is not by effort you know it said these jews these gentiles who uh, we are not the people of god so to say mm -hmm. this grace of partaking as children of god came upon them without any problems because they simply submitted yeah. so these people who say they know the law they know everything mm -hmm. they stumbled because they were having the they were having uh the bible and they were different no our bible says according to moses it says the messiah will be born that's why it is dangerous for to love to say um on a knowledge it's a problem mm -hmm. you know the coming of jesus christ was a revelation Yes. It was a revelation. And that's what the Bible says in Revelation. It says the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of what? Prophecy. Prophecy. So the spirit of revelation. Amen. So when this revelation came, these people did not realize, did yeah. not accept the revelation. They went on to, you call it tradition. Rem, tradition. They went into tradition to say, no, it will be ABCD. So they never agreed with what 
uh, with what uh, this one was uh, uh, with what this one was what was uh, saying they never agreed with what uh, uh, the, 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 or they never agreed with the coming of the Messiah. Mm. To them, it was he came not the way they were expecting. Yeah. So it reminds me in these other ways to say, I uh, do not expect God to do something in your life the way you expect it. Yeah. Yeah. God has got His own. Just be open and say, where is it going to? Be? Is it from the south? Is all the way it pleases God? Not the way you desire it to happen. Yeah, man. Boy, that's a lot of people mm -hmm. lose their faith over that. Over because that. they don't get an answer mm -hmm. the way they expected the mm -hmm. answer to come. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me again with this, 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 uh, this uh, rich young man, you know. He came to Jesus and he had a, a very kind, a different expectation, you know. A very kind uh, expectation. He says, uh, what should I do to enter heaven? Mm -hmm. But this reminds me to say, this young man was not ready to receive the answer from Christ. Amen. In other words, maybe he thought Jesus was going to pat his back to say, you are doing everything very well. Yeah. You do not have to do anything. I assure you, you are going to heaven. I think this is what this young man was expecting. Because the Bible says, when Jesus told him a different a statement, so to say, I would put it. Different mm. idea. Far away from what he was expecting. Mm. It did not uh, please him. He turned. With, he, he, in other ways, he, he ignored Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So to put it, he ignored Jesus. And then Jesus turned to the disciples and says, it is very hard for a rich man yeah. to enter heaven. Someone has very cleverly said, mm -hmm. it, it says... Uh, that he had great riches. Mm -hmm. But someone turned around and said, it was more like great riches had him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great that is very true. Him. That is very true. That, I agree with that statement. Yeah. Riches had him. He yeah. never had riches. Because if you have riches, you are able to control yeah. your riches. But if riches has you, or have you riches, yeah. then those riches will control you. Yeah. Yeah. If the riches have your heart, mm -hmm. well, like, uh, if you're hung up on mammon, mm -hmm. you, your heart has not got any space mm -hmm. for faith in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, this is what he, I was trying to, I mean, this is what I was seeing in this uh, scripture that you just seen. I mean, on verse, it's, it's, it's 9, chapter, uh, verse 30 and 31, eh? Chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, yeah. verse 30 and 31. Uh, it says, it says, these people tried hard to follow the Lord. They tried hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, when you are trying hard, they, they did sweat in following the Lord. But it's still more they failed. You know, there's something that is interesting. Even the man who received the law from God, the first hand information it's like you are telling me i'm getting and then i tend to people begin to explain what you have mm. told me they said this first man who received the law did not make it mm. so it is proving to say you cannot enter heaven by obse observing the law yeah but by yeah. Ob simply submit to the will of god i mean to the lusciousness of god yeah. amen let's continue yeah well, let's flip back to uh, chapter 3 of Romans. Romans chapter 3. Yeah. To just go over this over again in a different way. Therefore, by the deeds of the... Uh, 3 verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. The law's purpose... Mm -hmm was to explore. make people aware that they needed a savior. Mm -hmm. that they could not overcome sin themselves. Mm -hmm. They needed a savior. Mm -hmm. So the uh, by the deeds of the law, by the works, and uh, they use the same word here in Greek as it does in... Uh, 
Oh, before I get away from there, mm. um, I had this thought. Mm. It says that, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm-hmm. The law, at this point, I mean, there is there is the knowledge of the of good and of evil, mm-hmm. but at this point, the law is like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. Until they knew that there was sin, mm-hmm. Adam and Eve mm-hmm. walked in a beautiful relationship, righteous relationship with the Father. But they ate of the tree of the knowledge mm-hmm. of good and evil. Mm-hmm. And this is what the law, mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. the, tra- the tree. Mm-hmm. It's like the tree of the knowledge mm-hmm. of good and evil. Mm-hmm. When they knew there was sin, mm-hmm. then they knew they were guilty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it was just a thought I was passing yeah, by. And I, it, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, no. That's, I guess the, mm, that's very important. Because, now, what you are saying here, um, Pastor Love, is that uh, the law came to expose what is in the flesh. Mm. Or the law exposes the weakness that is in the flesh. Yes. Yeah. That's the duty of the law. Yeah. And I think this is the reason God says now, I will no longer uh, put these laws on the tablet, but mm-hmm. I'm going to write them in your heart. In your heart. Amen. Because what would happen, what would happen, rather not what would happen, but what would happen in those days, they would simply, because it is written, do not commit an adultery. I would simply take and place it down that way, you say. Do not commit an adultery, and then there I go yeah. and commit an adultery. Right, and then I come back because I've put this law somewhere there. Now, when that law is in in my heart, it is right there with me where I'm committing an adultery. Mm-hmm. It is speaking with me right there where I'm committing an adultery. So uh, this is what he, um, I mean when you uh, say that's Romans chapter three. Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 20, that was. 20. Uh, I, I have to read that again in our, in this New Living, New Living, New, new Living, uh, New Living um, translation. That's Romans chapter 3, verse, verse what? 320. Uh, 20. 3, verse 20. Verse 20. Okay. Uh, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows how sinful we are. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, in this one, the, the Bible says, the law exposes. It's something that is hidden. So without the law, we wouldn't have known. Yes, true. The sin. Yeah. Now, for God to expose and to see ourselves that we did or to see that we are uh, we have got his sinful nature. He brought on the wall. I mean, mm-hmm. on the wall. He brought in the wall. Mm-hmm. Now, it's just like you are reminding me, Pastor Love. It's just like when you have painted this uh, this uh, a building and you have written somewhere that he, do not touch. It is still wet. Yeah. Do you know what happens? I'll go right there. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go right there and say, Oh yeah, yeah. Indeed, it is still it is still wet. Yet I've I've seen that do not touch. touch. Mm-hmm. But now my body communicates to me to say, prove it. Yeah. Is it still wet? Then I will touch. So he says this uh, this word of saying do not touch, it is still wet. It exposes how weak my mind is, mm-hmm. how weak my body is. You know. So he says. He says, I've liked the last statement. Said, the law simply shows how, shows us how sinful we are. Yeah. You know, so the law came, as you are putting it, the law came to expose yeah. our weakness. Yeah. Expose that our flesh is the carrier of, the, of sin. Yeah. Our flesh is the carrier of what? Sin. Until... <clears throat> When we're born in Adam, mm-hmm. we're born with the what they call the Adamic nature. Mm-hmm. Really, it's mm-hmm. the devil's nature. Yes. Because when they broke off mm-hmm. connection with God mm-hmm. and love mm-hmm. and everything, mm-hmm. the only other 
nature, the only other character in mm. the in the garden mm -hmm. was the devil's character. Mm -hmm. So it's just totally selfish, uh, you know, totally self-centered, looking for what's good for me. I don't care about you. I mean, there's no love in the devil. The, in other words, the atmosphere of God departed. Yeah. And there came the atmosphere of the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Where self-centeredness, no yeah. love. Yeah. Thinking of evil towards somebody. Yeah. Betraying somebody. All kind of things that now became the order of the life of a person. Yeah. And that, the law does a very good job of exposing that. Exposing that. That you, there's no, nothing just, in you. Uh, the, in one the, place it says the, there's nothing in you. So it's just like when you say, you say Christopher is a good man. No, you don't know him. Yeah. No, he's a good man. Okay. Just put money there. Mm -hmm. I tell you, in, in three minutes time, you will not see that money there. Then you will know Christopher. Yeah. So the money that was put there is just like law. That money that was put there is now trying to expose who really yeah, I yeah. am. You know, so that's this is what your character when you, the back when the, everybody's back turned. Yes, yeah. my character. So this is the duty of the law now. Yeah, you say it came to expose the kind of a person. Yeah, so it exposes. So says now I've shown you now. Let's go back to Romans chapter nine. Now it's like the law as we are debating here. Now it's like the law after exposing the sin in us. That it is good saying now to say, this is the reason I'm saying, do not depend on your works. Amen. Yeah. He keeps Be saying it over and over. Uh, and, uh, because you are full of what? Your nature is a nature of sin. Yeah. Now, the yeah. only thing that you can do here is submit to my lusciousness. Yeah. Receive, confess that this son, this Jesus have blood in your life. Confess yeah. him. Yeah. Accept him then you'll be right standing with me. But otherwise, if you keep on uh, keeping the law, this will not happen. Yeah. This will not work with you. Yeah. You'll and not it, make But if it. the law is written in your heart mm -hmm. and you're, you've learned to love the Father, mm -hmm. then you'll have no desire to break the law. Amen. Because mm -hmm. you don't, you want to please the Father. Amen. You know, at, mm. that's, that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. When you, the Father's love is in you, mm -hmm. you can love others. Mm -hmm. And when you love others, Amen. This, this is a, you know, Jesus, two simple little mm -hmm. laws. Amen. He said the, all the law and the prophets Amen. is contained in those two. Amen. Love the Lord your God mm -hmm. with all your heart, mm -hmm. mind, soul, and strength. Amen. And love your neighbor as Amen. yourself. Amen. If you love the Lord your God with mm -hmm. all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, mm -hmm. everything about you will mm -hmm. desire to do what's pleasing mm -hmm. to Him, mm -hmm. and you will have no desire mm -hmm. to do those things which Amen. upset Him and are not pleasing. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Let's move on if we have time. Uh, yeah, how are we doing? Uh, let's go a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to go here and see. Okay, we we stay in Romans three for a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, okay, but uh, this is verse twenty one. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter three, verse twenty one. Yes, but now the righteousness of God outside the law, without the law, is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all born in Adam. Mm -hmm. There is nothing righteous in mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So we all need. But even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, upon all, <coughs> unto all and upon all that believe. Amen. Yeah. All of us need. Mm -hmm. All this need. You have brought me something, so I'm not trying to uh, divert from what he, we are debating here. But I think it's in line with the, what we are debating here. Uh, we have got this kind of thought, I'll put it, that they say we have not inherited sin. Oh. 
Yeah. There's a lot of people who would like to believe that. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I, w I have not inherited it. God will not judge me because of the sins of my fathers. Mm. You judge me. Well, it, and he will judge you. Mm. But you couldn't get anything from your parents mm -hmm. that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. You were born in mm -hmm. Adam. Mm -hmm. You were born mm -hmm. with the nature of the devil. Mm -hmm. So I have asked you that question according to Romans chapter, I mean the same th uh, 3 verse 23 should be, for all have sinned, uh, 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 for everyone has sinned, we are, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Amen. Now, this is where, where now this question came in to say, the debate was the servants of God, let's tell the truth, let's tell people the truth out there. Some uh, uh, people say, um, a child, oh, we, 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 we did not inherit the sins of Adam. This is what they say. Some other people, they, they have gone outside there, they're saying, no, I've not inherited the sins of Adam. I was created, by, um, I mean, uh, uh, Adam died way back. How can I inherit the sins of Adam? Well, mm -hmm. you, all you got to do is look at a baby. Mm -hmm. And what is the baby's interest? Mm -hmm. It's entirely selfish. Mm -hmm. Me, 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 mm -hmm. mine and mine. Mm -hmm. You get young children together mm -hmm. and one of them takes mm -hmm. the other's toy mm -hmm. me mine mm -hmm. selfishness mm -hmm. nobody taught them to be selfish mm -hmm. they were born that mm -hmm. way they were born mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. we see it in especially in young mm -hmm. adults mm -hmm. so often rebelliousness mm -hmm. against authority of any kind, especially mm -hmm. against mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Where did they get it? Mm -hmm. Mom and dad are mm -hmm. Christians. Mm -hmm. They've grown up in a, in a Christian environment, mm -hmm. and yet they're still rebellious against their parents mm -hmm. because they've not yet been mm -hmm. born mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. They're born in Adam, and that nature, that rebellious nature it's is still there. Them is there with them mm -hmm. until they're born again. Mm -hmm. When they're born again, mm -hmm. their nature changes Amen. to be a loving, Amen. sharing, Amen. enjoying mm -hmm. uh, what they have, mm -hmm. but willing to share it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, the whole I, selfishness. I, I, mm -hmm. I agree with you, because when, we, when the, uh, Adam and Eve were chased away from the garden, they never had a child. Mm, that's right. They never had a child. Now, when that child came, now, as you are saying, uh, these two people sinned. Yeah. And they were uh, uh, chased out of that garden. And when they were outside the garden, outside the environment of God, whatever they obtained in this wrong environment, took the nature of that wrong environment. Mm -hmm. Because if their child did take the environment or the nature of God, this child could not have sinned. That's right. Because we hear that their first children, so to say, mm -hmm. we see what was among um, between them. There was jealousy and mm -hmm. selfishness, yeah. which was not in the garden. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now, when they were outside the garden, they, they received or either they inherited or they either they partook the nature of the kingdom of darkness. Yeah, amen. And the other fact that is refuting this kind of thought that they say we have inherited the sin, we have not inherited the sins, is that if these, these are the only two people who sinned before God, why is it that after so many years, God brought Jesus to save us. Because the sins are with only these two people, Adam and Eve. And what is the reason of Jesus coming? He, was, he came to save us, to bring us back into this Garden of Eden. Amen. Yes. He came to bring us back into this Garden of Eden. So the fact 
that is out there that the people say we have not inherited the sins of Adam. It's just, I, would, I like to put it from, I always say it's coming from the people who are lazy in the mm. kingdom of God. Mm. Those who are lazy in the kingdom of God, they do not want to do the right thing. They think everything is very, is very simple. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they have even gone further to say, God has forgiven me the past sins and he has given, forgiven me the future sins. But I say, you guys, you people, where this is untrue, this is a false a doctrine. Mm. Very true. Sorry, I, I think it is in line with what you are teaching here. When the Bible here, you read the scripture, it says, for all we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For all we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So in this case, we have got the DNA of Adam and Eve, mm. yep. which was which the enemy contaminated it by uh, by letting them eat that what that yeah. fruit yeah so the generation from adam is a sinful generation and this is the reason christ came to bring us back or either to wash us from this generation of sins generation uh, from the generation of adam and to bring us back in the garden of uh in the eden the garden so I think, he, uh, I don't know what you have to say about it, though you have said a, a lot about this, but maybe I've got something to add on. Well, I was going to go back mm -hmm. to the person you mentioned who's sitting back and said, well, God forgave all my sins, forgives all my future sins. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. That person, I would seriously doubt, was ever born again. Mm -hmm. Because when you're born again, your nature changes no. and your desire is no longer mm. to try to get away with sin your desire is not to sin at all anymore so the word written in your heart mm -hmm. becomes mm -hmm. where who you are and where mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. and you're not trying to get away with future sin mm -hmm. uh, so someone who has said that kind of thing i would I would wonder whether or not they were ever born again. Mm -hmm. They may have, quote, believed mm -hmm. intellectually, but their heart was never changed. That is, that's, that, that, that is why I say they are trying to give themselves a license to sin. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You said that because God has already forgiven me. Or if I go, if I know, let's put it in, in this way, in this example. If I know that you have gone into a shop, and you have paid up front two million in that shop. Mm -hmm. You say, when, and I'm your child. And you say, whenever that child of mine comes in, whatever he picks here, be deducting from yeah. this money that I've what? Amen. I've given. So you have given me a license to go into that shop to pick whatever I need. Even if I've got no uh, use of that kind of a thing. Yeah. Because you have paid, I'll go and. So they are t these people, they are trying to give themselves a license to sin. Mm. To say, okay, let me go sin because my God has already forgiven me. If I sin today, God has already forgiven me my sins. Of. <laughs> that is a total lie, uh, dear our view, uh, viewers there. That is, is a total lie. It's a deception. It's totally a deception. deception. It's a total deception. God has not forgiven us for our future sins, never. Uh, if God has forgiven us our future sins, then there's no need of warning us in the scriptures. Amen. There's no need of God warning us through. There's no need of coming up with the written word. Mm -hmm. There's no need of preparing a place for those who have what? Mm -hmm. uh, for the sinners. There was no need of preparing that place. Amen. If God has already forgiven our future sins, mm -hmm. there's no such kind of a thing in scriptures that God has forgiven our future sins. But God says, if we need to stand right with him, we have to submit to his righteousness. And the Bible says Christ is the end of the law. Amen. And he is our righteousness. Amen. You remind me the scriptures, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Amen. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. In him. In him. In him, in him were him. the righteousness of, of God. God. 
not outside him not outside him in not him. outside of his will mm -mm. not outside of his character in any way but if your his character is mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. in your new birth amen you will choose to amen. live and walk like Christ did hallelujah yeah praise be to God uh, I think we're going to call it for time mm -hmm. um Well, we made a dent in it. We'll we'll have a part two in Romans. Wow. We'll go back here for sure. There's Amen. so much more to, Amen. to touch on. Oh, praise be yeah. to God. No, I thank God love you brought in a very, very good teaching. You know, and nowadays people are, I will repeat the same way that I say people now, they're so lazy in the walking of, with God. Mm -hmm. They're so lazy. They think everything God has already done, so they, they, they you know, they can do uh, whatever they want to do. In, 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 I mean, they can be so good to people. They can have orphans out there. They can go in the streets distributing food, yet they are not born again. And they say, by so doing, they are pleasing God. Yeah. Yes, God is pleased with good works, but if those good works are incomplete if they are done outside Christ. Yeah. If you if it's not done in faith, in faith. it's sin. And if it is not done fact, I think from I'm, the heart of Christ. Yeah. Romans fourteen twenty three. Romans fourteen twenty three. Uh, yeah, the, mm -hmm. The, uh, what he's talking about an in, another issue, but mm -hmm. verse 23, the mm -hmm. end of the verse says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Mm -hmm. If you can't do something mm -hmm. in faith, believing that it's the word of God, that he wants this thing done, it's in his heart to do it. If you can't do it in faith, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you are, uh, you're sinning. You're sinning. Mm -hmm. Anything outside of the will and the desire of God mm -hmm. is sin. So if you can't do it in faith, mm -hmm. don't do it. Mm -hmm. No. Praise be to God. Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Thank you so much. As I said, so anything that is done without faith, or that is, or that is not coming from faith, yeah, that one is a sin. Yeah. Coming from faith and and, and faith. Always comes from the rhema, from the, the, from the, from the, word, from the of word of God, God. from the rhema mm -hmm. of God, from mm -hmm. what God mm -hmm. is saying mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. to your heart, to my heart. A rhema. Amen. And if it's, it doesn't come from there, mm -hmm. then it's not His will. It's, yes. And anything that's not His will mm -hmm. is sin. See, it's a sin. Praise so, be to God. Praise yeah. be to God. Thank you so much, Pastor, for this yeah. wonderful teaching of. Uh, receiving Christ as our lusciousness. Amen. Receiving Christ as our lusciousness. Mm -hmm. We do not have to depend on our good works, on our effort, but we simply have to submit to his lusciousness, Amen. who is Christ Jesus. Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless God you. God bless you. God bless you okay. too. Amen. And we'll just close with the ironic <laughs> blessing. Mm -hmm. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and Amen. be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon Amen. you Amen. and grant you his shalom. Amen. Placing his names upon you. Amen. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. the Lord our provider. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah Shalom, mm -hmm. the Lord our peace. Mm -hmm. The Lord bless you and keep you mm -hmm. until we're Back here next Saturday. Next Saturday. Yes. yes. And the next Saturday, Plaf, uh, Pastor Laf has promised us that this will be, he's bringing a part two. Yeah, part two. Part two. Yes, part two. yes we didn't, uh, I have only a few notes because mm -hmm. we're using so much scripture, but mm -hmm. there is so much more. Yes. And let's, thank you so much for, mm -hmm. you're bringing so much out. Amen. I appreciate it. Amen. I absolutely Amen. appreciate it. Thank you so oh, much. Okay. Wow.